Hi, guys. Welcome to Touch by Prayer. I am your host, Lisa Perna, and I am so excited. I have not just one guest, but I have two, two guests. So two for the price of one. How about that? So what I've been sensing is that God has been putting ministries together. But guess what? He actually put two ministries together in a marriage. Oh, yes, he did, because he is just that good. And I'm so excited for you guys to meet the Torah Grossa family because they are here with me. Dr. Yana and Dr. Eddie, thank you guys for coming on Touch by Prayer. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Aloha. We are so happy to be on. I am so so excited to have you guys on. This is going to be so much fun. We are going to have, this is going to be great because I, I can already tell because my belly is all like flip flopping. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, I just want to talk just a little bit and I'd like to just give my little backstory. <laughs> I met Dr. Yana first mm. and I actually met her at, um, I met her in New York city at, um, at Times, uh, Times Square House of Prayer with yeah. uh, Tori Marcel Harper, who's amazing. So if you guys ever get to New York, go check him out. But he introduced me to this amazing, fabulous woman. And it was so crazy because when I met her, I she she kind of whispered, she goes, I'm getting married. And I'm like, can I pray over you? And she goes, yeah, you can pray over me. So I started to pray over her and and I never met. I didn't meet Eddie, but I saw him in the spirit. And let me tell you something. <laughs> My heavenly father, he got your number, Eddie, because <laughs> what I kept seeing was when I met you for the first time, I'm like, oh, it's like the same guy. It was <laughs> like I saw the big smile. I kept seeing the big smile. I kept seeing this amazing, handsome man. I was like, I totally know what he looks like, even though I've never met him before. <laughs> yeah. And it, was, and it was so crazy because God just was like, and this, and then this, and here, and take some of that, and take some of this. And it was like, and I'm going to put your ministries together, and you guys are going to explode. And I was yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> hey, and, and then I got to meet you. We got to hang out over at Kelly McCann's conference, which was so uber fabulous. So, and I just adore you guys. So I just wanted to give my personal, my personal testimony of the awesomeness of you too. But I'm going to let you guys talk and I'm going to let you guys share how God took one and turned it into two. <laughs> God's mad. <You> like that, huh? <laughs> Well, la this past Friday actually made one year since we met and out here in San Antonio, Texas. So we we were staying with some ministers that we know and and we just friends. We we just were there to to just do God's work. So for three weeks, that's what we did. Morning, noon, and night. We did God's work. We ministered to couples, to other ministers. To anyone they put us in front of, we went to hospitals, and and here's the thing: we never checked each other out. Yeah. Okay. We wasn't like, "Hey, how you we, doing?" No, yeah. there was none of that. <laughs> we had tunnel vision for God, you know, <laughs> clueless. <laughs> yeah, and and what was great about it was we were so in tune with each other to serve the Lord yeah. that it got to a point where she was finishing my sentences, I was finishing hers. It was, and and in the course of three weeks, we just grew to a place where on that end of that third week, during the service, we finished the service, we were standing in front of the, the uh, altar. The altar. And... The Holy Spirit said, put my hand on her back. As soon as I put my hand on her back, I went out in the glory. Yeah. So. I saw this rope coming down from heaven, just swooshing. It was just going, and it was twining. And when it got to eye height, it was done. And he just, I just felt someone pull me in. I'm not even the strongest here, but I just saw this. And then he pulled me in and that was it. The next day. He asked me out. We had never had a date. And he said, I don't intend for you to be my girlfriend. I want you to be my wife. At that point, I was like, okay. <laughs> it was done. It was done the day before. And when I pulled her in, it wasn't like pulled her in. I grabbed her and I held her in, in my arms. 
for like about 20 minutes at the altar. Nobody ever said anything. Totally the angels had us covered because yeah. people normally would say, hey, what's up with that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so needless to say, I didn't sleep that night. And the next morning we went to San Antonio. We had um, several appointments to meet with people. Everyone canceled this on our appointments except the yeah. last one so we went to the river walk yeah we went to river walk in san antonio and then i found the most romantic place to give her my heart in the lobby of mcdonald's okay because <laughs> i figured hey if they she says yes everyone's getting a happy meal <laughs> <laughs> oh that is the cutest darn thing i honest and truly that is the <laughs> darn thing. I love that. Everybody's getting a happy meal. I love that. <laughs> it was just one of those things where I, I couldn't contain myself. I, I was just bubbling up, bubbling up like, you have to marry me. If I could have married her right then, I would have. But I just said to her, um, I'm, I'm not, you're going to be my wife. I'm just waiting on a date three weeks after the Lord told us we could get married and we got married in New York City with our three children, yeah. Sean, Kiara, and Gabby. Wow. Oh, come on. We were, we were in McDonald's because it was so hot and I needed an ice cream. So <laughs> the desperation of ice cream at that point, it was like, yes, yes. That's awesome. That is so awesome. Okay. So, so God took, because you both had your own very powerful ministries. In fact, I just I just want to talk a little bit to Eddie because because Yana, we had you on our show. We had so much fun. It was such a great show. And I, I also want to talk about your new uh, CD that you are releasing. I know that there's been a single, but I'm interested in hearing the entire CD. So, oh, oh, oh yeah, heck yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay, so. So Eddie, let's just give a little backstory about how you even got into ministry because it is fascinating <laughs> what you, and, that, and see, that's the, that's such the cool part is that like you guys had these like separate paths and God's just like, oh, I'm going to put this one here and that one there. And then, poof, and then that, it was just like, you guys are so fitted. You're like puzzle pieces. Yes. You really are, you're like puzzle pieces. Definitely. So, so here's the thing. Eight years ago, I had an encounter with the Lord and at a, a, I was, I was at my old church and someone named Lisa Boldo, a good friend, she prayed over me. Now she didn't know, nobody actually knew I had injured my back. So for eight years, I slept in a recliner because my back was so bad. So she comes, someone told her, Hey, Eddie's back hurts. She comes out, she says, oh, I'll pray for you. Now, here's the thing. I didn't believe in healing because I, to me, the Bible was a history book. So here she's going to pray for me. The only time I ever seen pr prayers of healing were about three or four o'clock in the morning when I grew up in New York and I'd be coming home from the clubs. I was stoned and I see these preachers saying, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And I was like, oh my God, what a scam. People believe this. This is how I was. I was a true New Yorker. So what happens? She's going to pray for me. So I'm like, okay, because I have respect. I, I let her pray. But here's the thing. She prayed for me and I got healed and I jumped up. I'm like, hold on. I don't know what you did, but I have to do that. So she got permission to do this class at this church. So 12 of us took the class. I got spirit filled. And uh, three days before my 50th birthday, which was eight years ago, and I'm like on fire. So I don't know what I'm not supposed to do, what I'm supposed to do. But I went out into Harlem where I went to school and I started hanging out with the prostitutes, the, the homeless. I'm praying for everyone. People are getting healed. People are coming to the Lord. I had gang members running to the river to throw their guns in the river to get rid of them because they came to the Lord. And. And I, I mean, miracle after miracle. So now I'm at a conference. First time I'm at a conference, they have praise and worship. So I'm dancing and it was great. But then they do this thing called soaking. So I don't know what that's about. So 
I, I'm watching these people. So they're standing like with their hands up, with their eyes closed. So I'm like, okay, you know, and I, I keep opening my eyes because I don't want someone to like punk me, smack me. <laughs> you know, I'm like the to total New Yorker. So I'm like, okay, what's going on? And then I hear, oh, boom. And I hear it again, oh, boom. So I open my eyes and the guy who's doing the conference is holding the people and they're falling in the spirit. So now he's walking to me. I'm next. And like, I literally turn my body sideways. I plant my right foot because I thought he was pushing them. So I'm like, dude, you ain't pushing me. That, that just is not happening. So he just smiled, was about three feet from me. And he just smiled at me. Boom, I'm on the floor, hit by the Holy Spirit. I'm bouncing like a fish out of water. And then if that's not bad enough, I'm laughing, but not like, <laughs> no, I'm like, ah. <laughs> I'm stop. I'm like bouncing like an idiot on the floor. It's getting worse. The more I try to stop, the harder it's getting. And now it's getting ugly. Saliva's coming out. The book is all over the place. And in the middle of that, I'm like, how am I going to meet a Christian woman looking like an idiot on the floor? I'm being real. So I, I'm like, what's going on? And then I hear this voice. And it, it was daddy. He said, stop stop, let me take all that pain from you. And I knew that voice because before I was born, he spoke to me. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. As soon as I was in my mother's womb, my grandfather, who's from Puerto Rico, was a high priest of witchcraft and he dedicated me to Satan. Mm -hmm. So I grew up in that witchcraft. So I had a whole tormented life. But that day I knew that voice. Cause that was daddy. And I just relaxed and I gave all that pain. And as soon as I released it, I saw a black cloud come off me. And the next thing I heard was angelic singing. And I opened my eyes and I was in the throne room and daddy had the book of life in front of me. And he kept turning the pages and I saw all these names. And then he got to two blank pages and he said, bring me more names, bring me more names, wow. bring me more names three times. And that's when my ministry started. I just wept, and and I, I've not been. I ha, I've been on the road ever since. <laughs> it's like Aww. I've been traveling the world because it's like I, I got to get more names. <laughs> that that's, and I love, I love that story. That story is so good, and it's um, it's just what's really great is that here you were kind of wrapped up in witchcraft. But yet you still knew the voice of God. And that really holds true to that scripture where it says, my sheep know my name. I know my voice. Yes. And no other will they follow. And, and, and for those who are watching who have some kind of background, some past that God can't use you. I grew up in witchcraft. I practiced witchcraft. I was a bodyguard for a uh, drug dealer. I used to collect drug money with a baseball bat in New York. So if God could use me, He's, yeah. He can use all of us. Come on. Don't yeah. believe the enemy. Yeah. And so, so Yana, just give a little bit of a background so we can kind of see how diverse. Milk and cheese. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> some some backgrounds are a little diverse. So. A little diverse. Um, little I grew up, you know, went to college, came to the U.S. as a student, loved New York and kept coming back and forward ended up in business and I didn't know anything about the business I did. It was cosmetics and the Holy Spirit taught me. A couple of years later into the business, I get awarded by Buckingham Palace for my products. But the whole time the Lord's teaching me to minister to women. So when I eventually stepped out on my own in ministry, I didn't know anything, but I said, I really want to see the power of God. And when I stepped out and I saw people healed, <laughs> People set people, people fall in the Holy Ghost. I was like, wow. So like Eddie, it was just a, a, a straight encounter taught by the Holy Spirit. And I said to the Lord, you have to send somebody who's doing something, doing the same as what I'm doing, because I'm not changing. And this, this might be weird, but it's how, you know how the Holy Spirit nudges you? That's how we, we both learn in the same way, just through uh, obedience. And, and here's the key. She just said obedience. We're both together because of obedience, because in September of 2016, yeah. the Lord told Yana to put her house up to rent, 
sent Gabby to New York for college and to come to the States. Well, I lived in Hawaii for about three years and the Lord, the same month, same time, told me, put everything in storage. I'll tell you where you're gonna live when you come back. See, it's that obedience of hearing the daddy and saying, okay, dad, where you need me. Mm. That's so good. I had no idea, she had no idea. No, and then <laughs> when he asked me out and I said, yes, I didn't know him. We didn't, we had had those three weeks and had a glimpse of each other at eight days of Blaze Conference uh, in the earlier, the year yeah. before. But we had no knowledge of each other. Like you would get to know someone. It was really through that obedience. Yeah. That is so good. Okay. So this is the thing. So God has now taken Dr. Yana's, your ministry, and yeah. taken Dr. Eddie's ministry and just went like this. Boom. And he put this power packed apostolic vision into your spirits. So, and you guys are right now, you guys are starting to like make apostolic centers, correct? Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, so uh, I was UK, Europe, some Caribbean, and the US, and you was Hawaii. Hawaii, Haiti. I'm doing a documentary in Haiti. Um, uh, all through the states, Canada, South America, Panama. Uh, I can't even remember every place, but here we are traveling separately, and the Lord put us together to raise up the fivefold, yeah. commission them out, yeah. activate everyone into their calling. Because here's the thing: so many people feel I have a purpose, but have not been recognized by it. And our sovereign God will not do anything unless he shows his prophets, says that in the Bible. Look yeah. it up. <laughs> so that's what we do. When we meet with people in our conferences, we train them. We commission them out. It's not an ordination. An ordination takes place under your leadership of your church. A commissioning is recognizing the fivefold and the walk you're walking and coming into agreement with the Lord, with what the Lord has said over each person, yeah. and then commissioning them out. And just prior to commissioning, uh, actually prior to meeting Yana, um, I was given a sword. So I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> a sword, okay, what's, whatever. And here's the thing, the first day we met, I commissioned Yana. <laughs> Oh, come on. <laughs> he snagged me. <laughs> that's that's so good. Well, you know, if you actually look in the Bible, because, you know, we're coming in, we're coming into this season where women are really starting to rise up in ministry. They're starting to take their rightful places. No longer are they just sitting in the pews, you know, holding their husband's Bible. They're actually getting out there and they're speaking and they have something to say. So if you actually go into the New Testament and you see that a lot of the disciples, there were husbands and wives who went together because Jesus sent them out two by two. Yeah. Because I think, I, I, well, this is my personal opinion. I just think that a, a woman can minister to a woman better and a man can minister to a man better. And I think that when you start to cross the sexes, it kind of gets a little complicated. I think that's why so many people have had problems in that area. But that's that's just my personal point of view. I was told it a very, before the ministry was even thought of for me, but I was praying with people. And somebody said to me, don't ever pray over a man by yourself. You make sure you have a covering with you. Make sure you have somebody with you. And I didn't understand it. But there's there's so much emotion because God is an intimate God. So like we pray with people. It's very intimate. And there are just certain things that I just believe that that a husband and wife can do so much better. Yeah. And not to dismiss other because I think that there are other ministries that are catching this that are actually combining like um, that it's a woman's ministry and a man's ministry. And they're kind of doing tag teaming and doing stuff together because I think that's important. But they have they have a strong friendship. They have a strong bond. But I still think that it's different because when a husband and wife prays, somebody, I think it was Kenneth Copeland, he said, it is the strongest prayer you can pray. Satan can't mess with it. When a husband and wife are in agreement and they pray the same thing. Yeah. And one thing that I will say is because once you go into a marriage and form that covenant, 
that covenant, just like the rope that connects it, that rope was Yana, me, and God. Yeah. So it's a three-strand yeah. rope. So some people have a habit of saying, hey, where's your better half? There's no such thing as a better half. We're each one, and the three of us at, with the Lord are one yeah. now. So when Yana was in England and I was here in America because I came ahead of her, um, she was doing some conferences there. I would call in and minister and release words, and they're like, it's what Yana said. Yeah. And I was like, of course it is. We're one. Why wouldn't it be? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you hear from the same Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit isn't speaking to two different languages, just science. <laughs> then when we minister to people, there's the mother's perspective and the father's. And even for men, it's good because next standing next to any minister and even to men, now I can minister from the woman's perspective. And they're like, oh, they didn't get that nurture part sometimes. So it's a really good balance. You can get in there to, you know, right down into the nitty gritty and have people have a good understanding when mm -hmm. we're praying or bringing uh, teaching or just trying to help them move forward. And and we've seen where we've ministered and the pastor's wife now steps up and yeah. steps in and starts yeah. ministering yeah. also. Yeah. And that's what we want to see. We want to encourage because we need to each bring, we each have something special to release. I agree. I definitely agree. And I, I love what you said, you know, Yana, about that you were able to minister as a feminine part yeah. of, of the Holy Spirit because yeah. Eddie was taking care of the masculine part. Yeah. Because sometimes when you like, even if you have somebody who's just with you, who's just kind of guarding you, who has their hand on the person, but they're not actually ministering. It's different because yeah. you have to still temper what you say because you want it to get through and and there are but i do believe that that god that just like all right some people don't like the shack love the shack personally love 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 so william paul young love him but what he really did when when he wrote that book when he brought when he brought papa god as a woman because the man was so broken from his father that he couldn't receive from a man yeah. He could only receive from a woman. So that's why I'm saying that what I actually, I, th I think it was like three or four years ago, the Lord started to show me that it's going to be, that there are going to be ministries that are going to combine, that they were single men, who was a man and it was a single woman, but they were going to combine. But he didn't show me marriage. Just saying. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you guys got the you got got the double the double blessing. The double double. <laughs> I have a testimony of when I was in London and somebody asked me to come and be a guest at their church cafe in a in a cafe. And the local he was like a like a madman, he came in and they were trying to usher him, like, oh, he's gonna disrupt the meeting. I said, No, let him come here. And we delivered him, set him free over the table, and then I got my cell phone and I dialed Eddie. So this guy was supposed to be married. It never happened. As a result, he went, um, you know, had mental illness. And I was able to send free, pray for him and apologize from the woman's perspective. Then I dial Eddie on the phone and I say, oh, hun, prophesy to this guy. He doesn't know anything. He prophesied the very same scripture that the, the guy, once he got delivered, he started to, I have been set free to preach and teach the gospel. And it was like, wow. So he had the two ends of what he needed, mm -hmm. even though Eddie wasn't there, I was able to do that. And it was the same confirmatory word. And he was, he was really truly set free. That mm -hmm. And yeah. one of the things that, that Papa has given me is that the ability as I pray over people is to release a father's blessing over them because that is, we, we travel all over the world. And the enemy has gotten into people's mind that they mm. feel like this orphan spirit. They're even in the church and they feel like, well, I feel like an orphan. I feel unwanted. And when we pray for them and then I release a father's blessing, you see a, a yeah. instant change in them. I've had men who are in their 60s, 70s, 80s crying, saying, wow, my whole life went by and I never knew that's what I was missing. And I, I think that it's something that God is really bringing back too, 
Like God is really bringing back the father's blessings and the important, gosh, I mean, if, if you, if we really take a step back as a Christian, and if we take a step back and if we look at, at Jewish customs, if we look at people who follow Judaism, there, there is no poverty. There is no poverty. Like for most of the people who are Jewish, most of the people who are Jewish have, usually have really, really good jobs. They have a really nice house. They have a nice bank account. They go places. They have influence. But it's because for generation after generation after generation, they have what they dedicate their child. They do a father's blessing. It's part of the custom. It's part of what they do. And even at their bat mitzvah or bar mitzvah, there is a blessing that comes from the parent because when- so important. When they on Friday says Shabbat Shalom, the the wife lights the candle and does a prayer and song, and then the father breaks bread and they have the wine and they dunk it, and that's what we would consider communion. Right. But then the father blesses his wife and release a father's blessing over each child. See, that's, that's part of the peace that we're supposed to continue. And I agree. Trying to, you know, come against anybody. Look, I'm just talking what the Lord has shown me. Okay. Yeah. And and if we're grafted in for a purpose. Yes, I agree with that. And I think that people don't understand, you know, we're like, well, it's just some words. It's just some this. No, because things that are spoken have a spiritual power. It says life and death is in the power of our tongue. And it's funny because, you know, New Agers will say, oh, my gosh, you know, what you think about is what you receive. And I'm going to speak it to the universe and good things are going to come back to me. Well, it's the same darn thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know? Okay, so I have to ask, like, what what is going on with Torah Grossa Ministries, Apostolic Ministries? Because <laughs> yeah. I know it's about to expand. I feel it in my belly. I'm like, I feel like I'm about to give birth to something. Just saying. That's how I feel. And we would t- the first because when we came together, Eddie has his mandate, and I had mine. We said, let's honor God and still carry out the mm-hmm. mandate. So we got married. Our honeymoon was on the road. We never even had a nesting period. So the first quarter of this year yes. was to just settle, regroup, heal, pray, hear God, and be very on purpose of what's to come. And in the meantime, he did things like give me permission to do this single and, you know, do some teachings. I'm finishing up a book. And then Eddie's also I'm working, working on, on a book, yes, and <laughs> – and we're working on some other teachings because, yeah. I, again, with the Father's heart, that there's so much that I already know that I have to bring out and train up other men so that they just bring in the same thing into their communities, into their churches, into, you know, the nations. And I think that even a, a, a daughter needs a blessing from her father. Oh, yes, Absolutely. definitely. You know, there's, there's something that you know, little girls who have good relationships with their daddy seem to accomplish a lot more yeah. than those who struggle with their father. And they actually can just get into a better relationship with God because of it. Yeah. Like they don't have all that stuff that kind of, you know, stops them. But it's, and I, I believe that God is also going after men. <laughs> like I know he's raising up the women. So he was like, really, he was on top of women. Like, all right, this is how much I love you. This is how precious you are to me. You are my daughter. I love you. And and he just like, he just like schmaltzed us to, into, okay, I'll do whatever you want, you know? But, but now I think he's really going after the men because I get, I can see prophetically how the men are starting to talk. I can see a difference in those who have a prophetic voice and I can see that their heart is going more towards what the father's heart is, the heart of a father, as opposed to just like, you know, preaching and teaching, yes. but it's really about healing and it, and it's about loving. That's what I've been kind of noticing in the, in the scheme of things. <laughs> I think some of the women that have been raised also in this time, especially in power couples, is to raise up and push out men further yeah. than they were able to go before with the strength. But but to back them up, you know, so it's not a competition, but yeah. it's 
two strongs and, and, and to always, you know, since I met Eddie, there's so been so many things that have developed and, you know, like the commissioner, for example, that's one of the things. And, <laughs> you know, so now you, you, I bring my vision and what's my strength and administration and all those kind of wonderful gifts, creative gifts. And I say, come on, Eddie. And we pull it up and we bring yes. it together, the presentation, the visual communication, because not everybody reads. We, we use the best of the best of what he has, that evangelism, the smart, and we say, right, let's 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 hone that in to those who are drawn to that, and let's let's bring it together so the fullness of you and the fullness of me can reach the maximum that God wants us to reach. For him. That's yeah. awesome. And, and I, I just, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Eddie. What were you going to say? Uh, I'm just saying there, there's a healing that's taking place yeah. in the church mm -hmm. because one of the things, and I, I'll just do this right now as a, a, a apostle minister of God for all the ladies who are watching all the women who are watching I apologize for all the ministers who have not allowed you to step into the calling that you have in your life so I, it's that time for you to step into your position in the fivefold and no longer will you be held down and I've spoken in so many conferences to leaders and said, it's that time. My wife is an apostle. I have no problem if she has a download to sit down, break out my notebook and listen because it's daddy. Okay, yes. it's that time, yes. I agree, I definitely agree. Michael Fram's even saying yes. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Fram's all on top of it, he's like, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, um, but no, and I, I, I definitely, you know, Michael actually has done that. He's gone into meetings and he's actually apologized on behalf of men, not just in ministry, but and in general about husbands who didn't see their wife's calling or who just didn't see like the different like giftings inside of them or told them that you can't do this or God didn't call you for this. So he actually did this beautiful like apology to the women. And there were women who were like crying and, you know, mm -hmm. seriously, and look at what's going on with women right now. Yeah. Because women are actually standing up and they're like, if you looked, if you, if anybody actually watched the Oscars or the Emmys or the Grammys or any of them, they, they are saying the same thing that you will not do this to me anymore. They're standing up for themselves They're rising up. But see, that's the counterfeit of what God wants to do. Because God is wanting to rise women up to be strong, to take their rightful place, but not to humiliate, embarrass, or to, to put men down. That's not what he's about. He's about just, just bringing things up. And so sometimes what happens in the, in the supernatural or in the spirit realm, we pick up and it's like that women's march that came. Mm -hmm. it, it, when it was uh, the Christian women who were marching for the life, it was beautiful and it was peaceful and it was full of love and it was just this beautiful thing in Washington, D.C. But when it was the the counterfeit, it was angry and it was, vol it, was, um, yeah. it was just filled with violence and it was just, it wasn't nice. You could feel the anger. You could feel the frustration. You could feel the venom. And it, it just wasn't, it just wasn't God. But that still, that still meant that he was doing something because we pick it up whether we follow God or not. And that's something that, that he's been really showing me. I like that you say that, Lisa, because um, I, I come from the UK. So we have the Queen, we have Margaret Thatcher, we have a whole stream of women leaders. So I didn't, I grew up always seeing women in leadership mm -hmm. and I grew up very close to my father. So I'm sort of like, I didn't have those hindrances, but I see it and so it gives me the compassion to minister and so i encourage the women be the best you yes. develop yourself get to the highest you that you can get to because then you'll attract that then you'll minister that then that will be what you bring into a relationship so you won't feel weak you won't feel shut out you won't feel like an orphan begging saying oh give me a uh, give me a chance to speak you'll already be so full of stuff it will just bubble out and you'll uh, positively impact whoever you're with, whoever your husband is, whoever your partner is. So I really encourage the women. So they won't have that anger. They won't even have that frustration because they'll already be on purpose. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's the thing is that sometimes we forget that we have to, we really have to always 
go back to what the Holy Spirit is telling us to do. Because sometimes we we get these ideas, we get these like visions, and we're like, yeah, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. And then we're like, oh, I forgot to ask Daddy. What, what am I supposed to do with this? Because we can, look, you can get a ticket. Like you can get a, a first class ticket to someplace. And you can say, oh, I got a first class ticket. I'm going to wherever. But what if it was God's intention for you to take that ticket and give it to somebody else? Yeah, exactly. What if his intention was not for you to go, but for you to, to be the vessel or the conduit that was going to give it to somebody else because it was going to have a bigger impact. It was going to change that person's life. See, there's always these rules and these reasons, but we're, we're so quick to say, okay, God told me this, so I'm going to do this. And I was actually listening to Russ Painter and he really brought something that was really interesting back to me. And he, he actually said, he goes, sometimes when we've healed or we've prayed for somebody, like say a back problem, we're like, oh, I know how to do that. I can get rid of that. Oh yeah, no big deal. Because we have the confidence yeah. that we can yeah. do it. We have the assurance that it's going to be done. But see, everything that Jesus did when he healed, he healed differently. There were different things that he needed to do. So he always went back to the Father. And he says, and and so what Russ was saying today, he said, we need to bring ourselves back into that posture that we don't know everything because God might have a better plan. He might have something different to do. So I feel like we need to kind of pull ourselves back and say, okay, daddy, what do we do with this? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. and it's even like with, with this, th- these marches, like, unless God tells me, Lisa, I want you to go. I'm not going. Yeah, hear them on. I'll pray for them, but unless he says I want you to go, I don't go. Yeah, and everything we do, no matter what it is, a good. I mean, hey, you guys want to speak at our church or do this event or whatever, even to come on this show. The first thing we do is like, okay, hun, let's pray. Yeah, Mm -hmm. because Daddy doesn't say yes, then it's a no. I mean, then then we're not following. We're not being obedient. That's right. And I see, I respect that. When somebody says to me, when, they, when I invite them to come and do my show and they said, let me pray about it, I don't get upset. I don't get offended. I'm like, okay. That's because good. you know what? If it's not now, it's going to be later. Exactly. Yes. You know, because God doesn't put people, it's funny because some of the people that God's put on my heart and told me to contact, I'm like, yeah, they am. <laughs> you know? and, um, and then they did. And I was like, Ooh, okay. You know, so you just, <laughs> You just don't know, but there's but there's such a um, a synergy that happens when you guys are together. Now, I will say that when you guys are together, it's like a fireball. <laughs> <laughs> separately, separately, you guys are you guys are on fire by yourselves, but together, it's like this inferno because you and you can feel it you can feel the love you can feel how you play off of each other and I think that's what's so beautiful because I truly believe it. and and just hear what I'm going to say but you are actually what he wanted in Adam and Eve that's what he wanted I, I knew I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> just wreck us. It's okay. I know, I know. I'm like I know no tears no tears that's why I'm saying just listen to what I have to say because I feel that what he's what he's doing with you guys is is he showing that it's a partnership because he says it's not right for man to live alone and so I will create in him a helpmate and that's the beauty it's not a competition as you guys said it's not a competition but it's a communion that's what Jesus talked about. See, the husband and wife is supposed to be a communion, a communion of not only intimacy, but of thoughts and, and emotions and goals and dreams. You guys are coming into a place, but I just literally looked at you and I'm like, oh, they're like Adam and Eve. <laughs> That's, that was his intention. That was his intention for marriage was Adam and Eve, was helpmate, was fellowship, was camaraderie was not to be left alone because see, God can't give us that physical attention mm-hmm. that, that a man can do. And that's, you know, and it's interesting because God was talking to me about my husband and he was sharing some things. I can't talk, but he was sharing some things about it that just like, I never thought about. And I think that sometimes we've, we, are so 
on fire for the things of God that we don't realize what's really he's wanting to do, what his heart is really yearning for. Yes, he wants us to go out. He wants us to make disciples. He wants us to heal the sick. He wants us to raise the dead. He wants us to cast out demons. That is that there's no question about those things, but he's also about intimacy. He's also about togetherness. He's about families. He loves families. That's why he created us. We're one big happy family. Wow. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I was like, I'm like, should I say it? I, ha I ha but I had to, cause I felt the Holy spirit saying that that's what you guys really represent. It, wow. It's, it's such a beautiful and healthy relationship, but it's, um, it's the yin and the yang. And I know that's like a new age term, but it still is because if you look at the yin and the yang, they fit to form a perfect circle. So, so here's, here's, because we want, we always like to be real. So as we've known each other six weeks, now we're married and we've been traveling the world, living out of suitcases. And there's times that things flare up. And what we do immediately is stop. We're like, okay, where did that come from? What is the, is there a spirit behind it? Do you have some bad wounds from the past? Okay, let's pray yeah. on it. Let's break it because we're both mature Christians. We, it's not, I, I win, you win. No, no, it's we're one serving yeah. the Lord. So in those places, you got to, you know, I'm Puerto Rican Italian. There's a whole lot of machismo going here. <laughs> okay. So, but it, you got to stop, guys. You have to stop. And be humble and honor your wife and say, okay, baby, you know, I don't, I don't want us to be upset at each other. Let's, what, what's going on? And pray through it. And, and just, mm -hmm. you know, there's stuff from my past that flared up and I'm like, oh, I never even thought of that. And we just pray against him, break some serious Shut stuff. Shut it down. <laughs> Shut it down. And, and, you know, and this is what's helped us get yeah. so much closer. And whether we like it or not, where the Bible people read? We're traveling, serving the Lord. They're looking at us. They ain't looking at what scripture we say. They're looking at us. And yeah. uh, are they real? Or are they just faking it. No, mm -hmm. this is the real deal. And I, I, I learned deliver. I'm sorry. I learned <laughs> deliver and humility in another level because I was an independent woman, and to marry someone you don't really know—that's really trusting God. But once I saw that rope, do you know how many times I was like? Did I make it? Did, was it? It was God because how am I going to see that so clearly and ignore that? I said to Eddie, I felt like God just backed me up into a corner, like you know, you, here's everything you ever asked for. What are you going to ask me for now? And so when he asked me, I was just like, okay, yeah. <laughs> and it was laying it down that ministry began, laying mm -hmm. give it to, like completely. God, you can you can arrange my marriage. You can arrange my ring. You can arrange my dress. So all the things I thought I wanted, he had a better idea. And it wasn't what I chose. It was what he chose. And I, I would never choose. I would never do anything different. And mm. I learned things that we submit to that we think, oh, what am I going to do now? The power of prayer, the power of our there intercession. And that changed the way I ministered to people. And from uh, testimonies of a breakthrough, breakthrough with us, you know, getting to know each other and all that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow it's that it's that easy but we had to lay down something pick up his pick up the sword of sword of the cross and now work with that mm -hmm. that's our that's our help me the holy spirit work with that and everything falls into place i definitely agree with that and i i do i see that you're going to be raising up children that's what i see that the children are coming not yeah. little kids not maybe but <laughs> <laughs> but I, I see I see kids. I see some kids because that's the heart of the father is family. Yeah. He wants to show he actually wants he wants the church to be the perfect representation of what his family looks like. Because what you said, Eddie, is so beautiful. Like, yeah, people might not read the scriptures, but they read us and they can find a fraud. They can see fake. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Without a doubt. And that's, I think, why Christians have such a bad name. Yeah. Because we've had, we've had some bad press. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
I'm being nice. I'm being very <laughs> nice. <laughs> father for they know not what they do you know but i i always tell people i'm like you know you lead people to jesus with love you don't use jesus as a baseball bat and beat them over the head with them exactly it's like that kept me in church my whole life really mm -hmm. because i i i just thought people were just telling me how bad I was, how I was going to go to hell and all this stuff. So I was like, well, if I'm going to hell, I might as well go get stoned and hang out with my friends and, you know, party because mm -hmm. they never told me that mm -hmm. Jesus wanted a relationship with me. That, you know, when Jesus took my sins, he also tore the veil so I could have a place of intimacy with the father and go into heavenly realms. Mm -hmm. See, so many people get freaked out about it, but the high priest went into the in front of the in front of God, mm -hmm. right? The veil got torn, so now we can get over it. Oh step in, come on yeah. now. Don't now, live right. wait, wait, wait. Let 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 me just take a step back here because now 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 my my Holy Spirit beeper is going off. Okay, so <laughs> so so because in the Old Testament the high priest and there was only one. And they had to go bathe and they had all this stuff that they had to do before they could go into the Holy of the Holies, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. They actually were in front of God. Yes. Yeah. They were spirit to spirit with mm -hmm. the Heavenly Father. Yet people say, oh, you, you, that's just too weird for me. You can't, you can't possibly, your spirit can't go to the throne room. I'm like, really? No, we can. And they're like, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Um, and and it's so hard. That's what that's one of the things that I love about Ed, about you, Eddie, is because you you operated outside of Christianity, but you operated in power. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, serious yeah. power. Yeah. Like, you know, so when you switch kingdoms, <laughs> <laughs> you it's, knew how to operate. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so you, so you have like you got a a heads up, exactly what to do, and so you can see into the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. You know that demons are real, oh, like yeah. there's, and that's that's one of the things that I've just been. It's been such an ache in my belly to tell people, like, dude, not everything, not everything that you see is, is just because of the world. There are demons who are manipulating people. Like, I, but I'm not like going to sit there and go, everything is demonic. It's not yeah. that, you know, because I'm not going to give that kind of glory. But, but we do have to, you know, we got to call a spade a spade. Yeah. You got to tell, you know, look, demons are real. You just, but, but you have a power that's greater than the demons. Mm -hmm. So you can cast them out and get rid of them. You don't have to be messing with them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Without a doubt. And, and here's the thing. People will give more credit to the enemy. Yeah. And belief in all this demonic stuff. But then when you say something about God, oh, that can't be true. Oh, no, not God. Oh, no. You're, hoo -hoo. yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever's, yeah. Heck, you know what? But yet I'll go into a lot of places. When you go into a place like Haiti or I could go down a list of places I've been to where there is no doctor close mm -hmm. by. So you better know how to pray yeah. for your healing. And the, you see the supernatural operating, both in the natural for the kingdom of God and the demonic. So when you walk into that realm, mm -hmm. you can operate in a whole nother level mm -hmm. because people, was, well, they will know the truth. I, I've had witch doctors circle me in Haiti and start going like this, like they're going to kill me. And I start screaming, uh, Merci Jesu, which is thank you, Jesus. And then they try to throw stuff at me in the spirit realm and they fall over because of, of I, I, I'm in uh, John, Jesus said, I am in the father, father's in me and I am in you. So being that God's in us. So you can't touch this. I'm so sorry. So they come up and they're like wanting to know who has more power than me because they believed in the counterfeit. And I say, Jesu. So now they're coming to the Lord. They're accepting Jesus Christ as their savior and they become part of the church. Come on. And they can operate quicker. Yeah. 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 When, when they get uh, operate in it and then they know the truth, they just 
completely step into the fullness. People who are have been possessed. I mean, I remember one time putting my hand on this one guy who was uh, demonized, and he jumped up about ten feet up in the air, landed. He's got red eyes. He's looking at me, growling. And this is at a conference, and I'm like, "Come on, come on!" <laughs> and, and then we literally had to throw a lasso around him because the, of the, all the demons. We casted them out. He instantly accepted Jesus, got the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He's a member of the church. Come this on. is what we do. That's it. The Bible is not a history book, yeah. people. Come on. It's yep. the living word. Let's go live it. That's oh, wow. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> that, that can preach. That can preach. I'm going to have to use that. Come on. That is good. You, need to do, you need to do an Instagram. <laughs> Yeah, he's been a bit quiet good. on social media lately. You see, the last th these three up. months, the first quarter, Daddy's had me quiet, mm -hmm. resting, and filling me up, filling Yana up. So get ready, people. Feeding him. <laughs> oh, I, I, I can see it. It's bubbling up. I know. It's hot, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Okay, so, um, so you're going to write a book, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and it's about your life, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm just making sure that we're on the same page here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Daddy wants me to. Oh, yeah, he does. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do, you have the, do you have the title? Not yet. Okay. But, you know, it's they, I've had some suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> but I always listen to Daddy. He always gets my approval. I know he does. He's a good daddy. So, and Yana, let's talk about your single. Because, come on. Yes. Come on. Come on. There it is. There, it there is. it goes. So, the king. <laughs> can you play it? Do you have it on your phone? Can you play it so we can hear it? I think I can. Oh, I think you can. So I, think you can. I may have it. <laughs> I, I, I know you have it. <laughs> I have it too. Well, but, I just, but I just figured it would be nice to um for people to get a taste. Yes. So if people would like to order, if they want to order it, they can actually go to iTunes, correct? ITunes, yeah. And he's going to pull it up because. Perfect. The catalog, the cataloging part is uh, not so easy. Mm -hmm. See, that's why you guys are perfect for each other. <laughs> <laughs> he's Absolutely. A, he's a problem. He's a problem solver. Yeah. And I wrote this at Tory Marcel Hopper's conference. I was Come sitting on. down and I think it was, um, Stephen Furtick was speaking. I think mm -hmm. and he said, there's a piece. Oh, I was there. there. Yeah. I was there that night. Yeah. Those days. I think we went the second day or something. Yeah. Okay. And he said, there's a piece cannot be shaken. And the whole song just got downloaded immediately into my spirit. And I just, mm -hmm. it, it was just, you know, there's a piece cannot be shaken. There's a joy within my heart. And it was just a sermon. Mm. That just comes out. And then I thought that wasn't going to happen because I'm a writer, songwriter and singer. And um, when I was in London, um, a friend of mine who's a producer, he said, you know, come on by and we'll, we'll do the song. And I was sure it wasn't going to happen. You know, I just come from Spain, just got off a flight. Flight was late. All these things that could happen. The Uber couldn't find me, all this stuff. And I was like, no, it's not going to happen today. And this is the goodness of daddy because every time I call him, like, I'm late. Um, can I still come? He's like, yeah, come. And so this song gets done and released in super quick time with super, super miraculous resources. That's awesome. To bless the kingdom. And I'm like, wow. So it's available. Your love is deep. Available on iTunes and all other shop, uh, Spotify and um, other uh, platforms. And it was a blessing to me to be able to write and release this because there's so much entertainment out there. And on my heart is to minister to people. I said to, I said to God, God, give me songs that I could just go into a mall and sing. Give me songs that I could sing to somebody's grandmother yeah. or something, sing to young people. And, and, and they would all just get it. They would all feel the songs. So this is a season where he's just giving me mm -hmm. um, music, sounds, mini sermons, things that just, they just speak the wisdom and the love of God and they just bless your heart. You know, you can play it in the car and sing along. And I'm getting calls from people just saying, it's blessed me so much. Oh, that's awesome. 
Yeah, and so it's such a, it's a privilege, and for me, it's like a miracle because I was like, "You did this, Lord. This was this was when we get out the way. I could do stuff, but He did it. He laid He laid down the day, the resources, the producer, the mix. He laid it, and it was just done. It was just there, and I was like, "Wow, I nice. didn't do much of that myself, you know." Mm -hmm. Um, so when we first did the song, we released it on social media and it went viral. Eddie was like, mm -hmm. just sing, huh? just go live and sing. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and he's like, just do it. I was like, okay. Do and me. I did and it went viral. So that was encouragement for me. Mm -hmm. Did you yeah. find it? No. Not yet. Let's see. Uh, I, I tried to pull mine up, but the link isn't working. Oh, yeah, that's what's okay. happening. That's, well, that's on yours too? I'll have a, I'll have a quick look. I, we use the phone for all kinds of stuff, so we're always cleaning it after we've finished because to create space. So mm -hmm. let's, let's see if I can play it on here. So, so here's the thing. If you're watching right now, this is a year of creativity. We're oh. coming in for open doors, for just that threshold to just, wow. Wow, wow. I just see daddy's opening that door. And all of you, wow, there you go. Got the keys. So we're just calling in those keys of activation right now in your life. If you've been waiting on something, you've gotten downloads and you're saying, well, how can I do this? Uh, I'm a guy who grew up in the South Bronx, probably did everything wrong in my life. And I end up with a woman from England, honored by the Queen of England. And, and you know what? Here's another thing. I, when we got married, I said, I don't think how I don't deserve this. But yes, I do. And you deserve to step into everything you've been called to do. So we just call that out right now in Jesus name. Yeah. Got it. I think we got it. Let's see. All right. Let's listen. listen. Perfect. Perfect. Snippet from the iTunes. That is so good. <laughs> that is so good. Come on. Come on. We've got to get one to you, Lisa, for the car. Yes, I would love to have it. Okay. Absolutely. Um, I was gonna um I have to tell you, Eddie, it's it's funny because God is funny. So <laughs> you're talking about creativity. So I just wrote a blog today. Yes. And it's all about creativity. It's wow. That's all it's about, and it and it actually it's called pick up your paintbrush. So yeah. I'll I'll put it in if people are interested in reading it. But it, yeah. what was really interesting about what God showed me is He says because of fear of rejection, people have stopped creating. Yes, yes. and so He started to show me the books and the music and the plays and the the different things that would not be created because people were afraid and it made him so sad wow. he was so sad and he started to talk to me and he said he said lisa he goes i am creation yeah he goes, you are my child you are creation you are created to create yes, yes. i went oh whoa <laughs> <laughs> yes so, so then he said to me, he goes, Lisa, he goes, how many children don't like to finger paint? 
I said, none. He goes, exactly. He goes, because they have been told that they have never been told that they can't do it. Yeah, exactly. He says, but when it comes to a man who tells somebody that they're not good or they're incapable or that they should just give up, yeah. they do. They do. And so what they have inside of them never comes out. Yeah. And it made him sad. Wow. wow. Isn't that sad? That really made me sad. I was like, oh, awesome. sorry. <laughs> you know? And he's equipped us to discover so much, even in the foolish things, even just yes. ex exploring and experimenting. Like when Eddie says, just get on the live. And I was, it was, it was very re rejection. Like, oh no, I don't want to do this. And you do it. And then God is like, yeah, thank you. I'll use <laughs> Absolutely. that. So I experienced that. Even though we minister and do stuff at different levels in other areas, you still can sometimes feel that fear like, oh, I don't know. People are, you know, what are people going to say? But you're, you're right. It's just a step. Just do it anyway. Do it anyway. Yes. And, and, that's, if, and that's it. Do it afraid. Do it anyway. Do it any way you can. <laughs> the thing is, if people aren't talking about you, you're not doing anything. <laughs> yeah. That's first. So you got to go out there and do everything. I, I always ask. If money wasn't an issue, what would you be doing? If you didn't have to worry about bills and all the other things in your life, what would you be doing? Yeah. And after they say, you know, they say whatever it is that they were really passionate about, I said, what's stopping you? I could do all things through God who created me. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Stop fear. Is false evidence appearing real? Yeah. And success in anything is on the other side of the threshold yeah. of fear. So yeah. step, step forward. Yeah. Come on. And here's the thing. Even if you fail, what did you learn from it? Yeah. See, if you learn from every failure, you're going to be amazing. And sooner or later, you're going to succeed. Lincoln, the president in the U.S., failed so many times in everything before he became a president. Come on. Absolutely. Well, there are so many people who, well, first of all, look at all the artists who were never famous until after they died because they were forerunners. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. People didn't understand their painting until after they died. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Think about the people who did manuscripts of, of different books that just got rejected from this one, rejected from that one, rejected from this one. And so finally it was like, it's a huge seller. It's like, who could reject that? There are so many different things that we, that if we actually start to look at what, what happens is that, you know, the enemy tries to stop what's inside of us. And how does he do that? He stops it by using people. People who say, mm, I don't think you should do that. I don't think you're called to do that. Maybe you're not supposed to do that. Maybe it's for someone else. Seriously. Mm -hmm. I had to talk with, because I, I have something inside of me that, that is going to come out. And uh, this, there was somebody who said to me, I think you should give that to someone else. I don't think it's for you. Oh, no, seriously. And, and this was a ministry leader. Seriously. So... I said, All right. and I, I was so sad, I was crying. I didn't, not in front of the person, but later, I was like crying to the Lord. And, Lord, I, and I said, why would you give me something if it's not meant for me? Exactly. Yeah. And he said, Lisa, he goes, what I have given you, no one else can do. It is for you. For you. He said, but if you choose to not do it, he goes, it will still be done. But it will be your choice, not mine. Yeah. So that's the thing. So the enemy will come and use people to speak into our lives, to tell us to stop, to not try, that you're not going to succeed. How many people have been told, oh, you want to be an actress? Oh, gosh, you know how hard it is? Do you know how many people get accepted? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Seriously. You know, and, and so... This is my feeling for it. And because because I just wrote, I finished writing this this blog, but and it was like, if you are called to write, write. If you are called to sing, sing. If you are called to dance, dance. I don't care if you're singing in your tub or if you're dancing in your living room or if you're writing in your journal. You still have to get that stuff out. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. And it and doesn't matter. We we have this thing in our mind of what success is. If, mm -hmm. if my book when it gets published, if it uh, only one person bought it, 
somewhere in Australia, but they accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a success. Right. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> when I started Touch by Prayer, I, am, I would ask my husband, how many people watched? How many people watched? And so was, I mean, this is in the very beginning because I've been, this is my fourth year of doing it. Wow. And um, he said, because it was just a podcast at the time. And so he said, I don't know. I think we had like 12. I'm like, 12? So I got in the car, drove my kids to school, and I like had a sad, I, I had to sit down with daddy. And I'm like, all right, seriously? 12? 12 people? 12 people? Really? You are the God of the universe. You can have more than 12 people watch, listen to my show, you know? And uh, and the Lord said, and he did, he said to me, he says, Lisa, he goes, if one person listens and gives their life to me, is that enough? And I said, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's what we did. He six weeks later, he changed the world with twelve people. I know. Well, six weeks, <laughs> six weeks later, I got a text. I got a message that that somebody listened to my show, and because of my show, they gave their life to Christ. Oh, oh come on. The Lord. That's, that's awesome. Great. So I agree with you, but it, but I think because we've become so focused on what we think is reaching the multitudes. But but the Lord said to me, He's Lisa, just get it out. I'll take care of the rest of it. Just get it out. You know, when I started when I started traveling doing conferences, um, the first one I did, he goes, Don't worry about how many people are there. Because every place you speak for the rest of your life, as long as you follow me, it will be a full house because everyone I want will be there. So yeah. we've got, we were in Tennessee and we spoke at this big church and it was great. But then afterwards, the, the brother we were staying with, he said, hey, you want to go to this neighborhood church? And I don't think they had a dozen people there, but I will tell you, each person got up and sang a song and all we did was weep. Mm -hmm. I mean, the presence, and then they had a share and and we're like, we can, yeah. God, thank you so much because that just spoke to our hearts. Yeah. Oh my God, it was like one of the best services. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. Okay, so if people want to get in touch with you, you awesome duo that you are, <laughs> um, besides finding Dr. Yana on iTunes, right? Yeah, with your love is deep. Yeah, so just, I think it's just, yeah, it's just Yana. Your love is deep, Yana. Yeah, um, your love is deep, awesome. Yana. So if you guys are interested in uh, downloading it and your books are going to be coming out, but right now, I think you guys are working on a website, correct? Yes, we are. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're enjoying being Mr. and Mrs. This is I love that. I love that. I see a little sparkle. Maybe that's why I said I see little ones. <laughs> yeah. So we're trying to do it quickly, but then we're hanging on to some of the time because we I knew this would happen. You know, yeah. get us married, Lord, and then you can't get hold of us for a minute. But yes, um, we're gonna work on the website some more and, and you but can, if people are interested, they can find you on Facebook, correct? Yes, Tora Grossa Apostolic Ministries. Okay, so if you guys are interested in wanting to get in touch with Dr. Yana or Dr. Dr. Eddie, you guys can go to Tora Grossa apostolic ministries here on facebook yes, yes. We look so forward. do you guys have um i don't know and i just kind of feel like you might have a word for someone do you feel like you have a word for someone first. okay so okay. we're we're in a season we, i just came out we just came out of a season of the deborahs where the awakening for the women happened we're in a season of the josephs there's mm -hmm. a lot of professionals who god has called out of the marketplace into ministry and they are multi-talented. So it's the season of the Josephs and the Daniels. The Daniels work together. So Eddie has a mm -hmm. Daniel anointing, very strong Daniel anointing. I carry a Joseph anointing because of my background. And he's using those that anointing to raise into the leadership in the fivefold, but more with that authority and that dominion, the ability to understand finance and resources and create wealth and create strategies to, to serve the body, not just raise up leaders, but raise them up to be sustainable. And so uh, these gifts and these talents that we're sitting on, the Josephs, I'm mentoring Josephs right now because I recognize they're not sure. Can I use my, my, my fame 
and ministry, my, 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 my Christianity, can I use my business acumen and Christianity? They're not sure how to do both. And once it's redeemed of the Lord, once it's, it's, it's handed back to God for his purpose, it will be redeemed and it will be fruitful for his purposes. There's, there's no reason that God will, you know, that, that people not in the kingdom will prosper and have dominion and us not. So now is the time when he's raising us up to, to really walk in that as sons, mm -hmm. to travel, to make connections, and to have the resources that we need to, to travel somewhere and be a blessing, raise up people. You go somewhere, they don't have what they need. You say, I'm going to be the provider of that. And in return, God will take care of us. So I'm just, I'm just encouraging those who are called, those who have stepped out, those who are multi-talented, those who have many ideas. It's a season where God is using the multitude of what he's given you, the abundance. So who much he's given, much is required. And he's pulling on that, what he's given mm -hmm. you in Joel 2.28. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. So you, you're being awoken. You're being activated and now you realize i can do all this stuff do it my word to you is do it because the time is now in jesus name so so here's the thing i i kept getting some of you are feeling sad because doors have closed on you people have walked out of your life um jobs have closed down mm -hmm. uh positions have closed down and 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 this is a time for you to go and like we spoke earlier, to get with daddy, to go to him because he's raising you up. Don't be sad. It's a time to celebrate. OK, he heard your one prayer the first time asking for help. He got that. He knows. Now it's a time for you to step in, celebrate the doors he's opening, because this is going to be a crucial time in your life. You're going to look back and you're going to say, wow. In March of 2018, yeah. I was, I thought my life was over. I thought, man, that was the best job. That was the best person in my life. That was the, and, and you know what? Trust God, because it's that time. You're going to see this month, it's going to spin. By the end of this month, you're going to look back two weeks back from now, and you're going to say, wow. That that that's right. And, oh my God! I felt so down. I felt like God turned His back on me. And just if you feel that, repent, get it over with, and just start celebrating. Put on some good dance. I always go on to YouTube. I put Christian dance music, and I just start dancing. I just start celebrating because the joy of the Lord is your sword. It's your strength. It will give you and propel you into what you have been call, calling out, asking, Daddy, I want this. Use me. Use me. Use me. Well, come on. Jump in there. It's that time. Woo. Come on. Oh, that God. is good. <laughs> I, I, I got that in my belly. Uh, yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Because, um, yeah, God, um, he's talking about doors. Um, I'm having, uh, my yeah. second woman's conference is it's going to be Whoa. May 18th through the 20th and it's called unlocking your inheritance. And the wow. Lord started to show me that each person who is speaking is actually unlocking something. So there's going to be unlocking of creativity. There's going to be unlocking of destinies. There's going to be unlocking of the seer gifting. It's yep. going to be unlocking of dreams. And it's also going to be unlocking of, of the womb to carry that promise, to carry it to full term. And it's absolutely these doors. It seems like everything's closing. But God, only God can close doors. He can close doors that no man can close. And he opens doors that no man can open because those closing doors signify something's about to open. Yeah, you that. can't, you, you have to close a door before you can open up a new door. Exactly. Right. Cause that means you're walking through. Huh. That's yeah. right. You're walking through. So when you're walking through, you shut the door cause you're polite. <laughs> before you go and open up that other door right yeah, yeah. And, and i just saw a vision of someone walking towards a supermarket and as they got closer we know this happens the doors automatically oh, open man. yes and everything you need is inside in the, there yeah. so Come just on. step out step yeah. in and and just trust daddy he's got you 
Yeah, he does. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. he does. Yeah, he does. I love you guys. You guys are so awesome. <laughs> I do. I just love you. I really do. You guys have my heart. I just think you're so precious. Thank you so, so much. We're gonna we're gonna have you back on again after you open up your apostolic center. Oh yes. wow. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Come on. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Not just one, but many. Yes. Multiple. Lord. Multiple. Starting in Texas. Yes. Wow. And Not for those of you who don't know, we, we just set up our base here in Texas. Yeah. So, so yeah. it's going to start in Texas and then it's going to branch out. Yes. Places. So definitely we're going to be going Aloha because yes. yeah. if you open that one, you're bringing me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and here's the thing. Sometimes people don't understand. They're like, oh, so you left Hawaii. You're not going there. No, yeah, of course I'm going back there. You know, we're in London, we're now in Texas, New York, uh, and, and we'll be back in Hawaii because that's what daddy yeah. said. That's you right. know, sometimes people have uh, put uh, their job, oh, I make this much a year, so I can't do this. Why are you trusting your job? Yeah. Trust God, yeah. and you can do all things. Yeah, absolutely. We, don't, we don't look at how much we make or what this, we just look at daddy. And yeah. everything else comes into alignment. That's yeah. so good. Well, I'm getting excited. We're going to definitely have you on when you get your book done. Yay. Yes. <laughs> Seriously. I, and that book's going to become a movie. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I received that. Because <laughs> yeah. your story is powerful. Thank you. It's powerful. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. people don't even know it. Yeah. They just okay. have no idea. I don't know the deepness and it's very interesting because when I met Eddie um the first day I came into Texas uh, the first day I went into Texas we went to see yeah. a movie premiere a Christian movie and I told him he looked dapper he had on a tuxedo <laughs> and then he didn't know what dapper meant he was like what is, that? <laughs> what is that what is that and I said no it's a polite way to um compliment a Christian man without you know any kind of uh you know, miscommunication. Mm -hmm. And so he likes the phrase, she had me at Dapper. <laughs> I, love that. I love that. This has been so awesome. So will you guys just pray out the show? Yes. yes. Thank you. So Heavenly Father, we just bless your mm -hmm. holy name. And we thank you for those watching, those who will watch later, and even for Lisa for this platform to come and share, Father God, and bring the good news. And Father God, we just say, inspire everyone listening, give them a go in their spirit, give them a check in their spirit that has them excited to step out and walk in what you've called them to be an encouragement in this show today in Jesus name. Daddy God, you spoke to each and every one of us because you said it in your word, you knew us before we were in our mother's womb. So in that place, you released the word, you released our destiny, each of your children who are watching now and for the future, we just call an activation you. of your destiny scroll, which you released into each of them. And we say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, now, Lord. We call them into the fullness of what they've been created to do. And I release a Father's blessing over each of them to step out in your love because mm -hmm. your love will get them through it all. In Jesus' mighty name, we love you, we honor you, we bless you. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on. If you guys would like to go to Tora Grossa Apostolic Ministries here on Facebook, you can find both Dr. Jan and Dr. Eddie. Thank you guys for tuning in to Touch by Prayer. Remember to go out and touch someone. Good night. Aloha. Thank you. God bless.